So, Dimitro, good good morning, good afternoon. Good <laughs> good morning. Well, it's still morning your time. It's thank, afternoon here. Thank you, thank you for joining us from Kiev. Um, we tell us where you you were this morning. You were at the front, or you were at the front in the last few days. Tell us what you were doing okay. there. Uh, last night I was in the front lines. Uh, we were testing some of the um, projects that I'm involved with. Uh, it's uh, technology around UAV. Um, with the, um, and we did some testing. So there's a lot of uh, technologies that are integrated into this. So I was, uh, we were, we had to do the, all the tests in the night. So uh, I was driving all the way uh, to Kiev, and there was. I'm, I would like to apologize for not being on time because I was worried about the quality of the connection um, on, on the road. Uh, that's why um, now I'm uh, home and I can talk with you. Well, well th thank you. And, and needless to say, you don't need to apologize. I wanted to certainly express on behalf of the MIT Technology Review uh, Innovators Under 35 Europe our solidarity with the people of Ukraine but also on behalf of, if I may, on behalf of the European tech community. We have always admired the number of startups and founders, the number of tech pioneers from Ukraine, including the founders of Grammarly and GitLab and so on, and yourself, because you played a key role in modernizing the Ukrainian economy. Tell us a little bit about the tech community of Ukraine and, and how, uh, in God's name, are you able to survive? It is a matter of great inspiration to all of us that you're able to uh, continue to, 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 to work, to survive in, in the midst of this invasion and war? Um, thank you very much. The Ukrainian high-tech community is extremely vibrant and being vibrant. Um, there is a lot of prerequisites uh, for the vibrant community to emerge and, and grow. First, uh, it's a technical skills, availability of the technical skills. And uh, gradually over the last 20 years, Ukrainian high-tech community grow from the classical outsourcing business where people worked with the diverse of technology left and right, latest technology, all technology, a lot of innovation been going on, uh, delivering different projects for different clients from hardware industry to the software industry, uh, from automotive to space industry. So there is an extreme variety of technologies that Ukrainian developers been involved. And one element is very critical in terms of the developing vibrant community is desire to look for, for new solutions, desire to look for uh, ideas and then implement them as a, as a project. And that was a very transformational story that is uh, taking place um, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, many startups emerged. So we gradually moved from the outsourcing business to the uh, to uh, startups. And as part of this, a few years ago, there was a creation of Ukrainian startup fund, which is government uh, seed fund, which is funding a lot of startups. And then there is a lot of, so which is, which is helping and enabling community to do, to pilot ideas. And uh, every, every month, every two weeks, uh, actually uh, there is a pitch session where there is a, a collection of people who can do things and actively engage in the different activities and so on, and then win and get the, 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 the grants. But the question is about incubators, uh, accelerators, and other different tools that is helping people to actually get things done. And then what is also important is, is connectivity with outside world. There is a big Ukrainian community in Silicon Valley Many startups very often will create a startup in the Silicon Valley and then use R&D teams in Ukraine. Similar thing, for example, PetCube had an R&D team in Ukraine, production facility in China, and then uh, the head office is in uh, US. And then this diverse community is looking for the seed investors, investment uh, engagement, etc. Why I'm telling this all the perspective, uh, because that's a very important area to understand that over the years, uh, we built a very strong foundation of IT community with a lot of technical skills in the diverse areas. So when the Russian aggression took place, a lot of IT people went into the 
um, dual purpose technologies. So there is a lot of work is done for artillery. Uh, there is a lot of work done with a lot of cloud technology for image processing. There is a lot of in engagement with the UAV. Uh, there is a lot of uh, activities going on around, um, you know, uh, avoiding uh, uh, GPS suppression technologies, etc. So there is a lot of activities, and and because the volunteering idea is very very critical for Ukrainians, and it's our country. Uh, that's why a lot of many, many, many projects been developed. Many, many, many projects are actually on the field and being tested on the ground, helping military, helping civilians as well, because we need to look in this from the humanitarian perspective. There's a lot of humanitarian needs, coordination. Um, many elements that have been built over the years are key enablers of the technology, cloud technology, and they're heavily activity in the cloud. FinTech industry in Ukraine is very active in the FinTech. As a result, we have a full functioning financial system in the country. There is no issues of paying somebody and or transferring money. Um, it's a classical kind of uh, expectation of the um, cashless economy. All these elements are definition of tenacity of Ukrainian high tech. But the main thing is the passion for the country, passion for Ukraine. So one of the things that we have talked about over the last uh, 24 hours or so, and we have innovators here from right across Europe, from Austria, Andorra, from Spain, uh, from France, um, and we have guests in from Ecuador and Mexico as well, but we're talking about this desire, this passion to make the world a better place. In your case, you are the preeminent business person in Ukraine involved in the digital economy. You led that work for the government. So a personal question, you could easily leave Kyiv and being somewhere a lot safer. Uh, why are you staying and why are so many of the leaders of the tech community in Ukraine determined to, to stay in Kyiv and to stay in Ukraine? This is my country. I, I, I've been in Kyiv uh, all the time during the invasion. I've been, um, I'm, I'm sit besides being a high tech investor, I'm also the executive chairman of the biggest pharmaceutical company in Ukraine. We have a responsibility for make sure, to make sure that um, our products actually available to the uh, hospitals, to the pharmacies, to the patients. Uh, and that's very critical. And when the strikes were, rocket strikes were all around our mm, facility, um, I had to, to work with a team and, uh, and coordinate both physical presence of the team. You can't leave a production facility and just go away. You have to maintain it. Um, with the virtual teams, P teams who've been coordinating and acting um, uh, during the, the process. For example, uh, before the war, we have a lot of technology being implemented. Uh, and one of the technology which enabled us to do a quality control remotely. COVID taught us all in the world how to be remote and how to create virtual teams with a lot of tools who help co to coordinate uh, the business processes. Of course, you still need people on the ground. Being a business leader, it's critical to be on the ground with a team. People need to see you on the team, in, on the field. They need to know that you are here. They know they need to to to, to need, you need to see their kids uh, in our bomb shelter during the hot part of the war in in Kiev. I had a, I had 150 people, 40 kids, dogs and cats, uh, and you need to to walk around and talk to them and, and sometimes, you know, chat with kids uh, because it's, it's your team, you can't leave. Well, let me just say that you make it sound very commonplace and ordinary, but that type of leadership, the leadership of your president Zelensky, the leadership of yourself as an entrepreneur and founder, it's not common in this world of technology uh, uh, that we are familiar with, um, but it is inspirational and it is what we would like to think would happen. Um, and we want to make sure that we provide resources. I know the European Union in particular provide resources to continue the, the growth of, of TAC in Ukraine and, and to support the entire community, entire population. Tell us about how the TAC community has tooled itself up for this terrible war and to respond to this and to defend Ukraine. Because I know that some of your uh, tech, tech, leading technology experts have found new uses for their technology to defend to defend the population. Tell us how that has worked. 
So there is a multiple, as I mentioned, there is a lot of activities being going on. Uh, technology industry being looking into the wise, how to first on one hand help military, on the other hand, help humans. Uh, without the cloud technology, without 4G technology, it would be impossible to connect people, to coordinate things, to uh, search and rescue, to organize humanitarian support, to fundraise. And for all of this, you need to have a platform, scalable platforms that are capable of doing this. You need to have a social media to work with the social media to distribute information. You need to coordinate activities. If you look at the fields, um, military fields or intelligence gathering, you know, how quickly you can gather intelligence from the you know, person on the ground to the, uh, to the counter response, how quickly you can coordinate that and how quickly you can resolve or save people, how, how quickly you can find corridors to do humanitarian help or delivery medicine or do evacuation. And that's where IT community stepped in, in, in helping a, a, a big area, a big, a good many different groups. Uh, there was no coordinate, like, like this is very important. There is no single coordination activity. It's a, it's a network. We live in the world of networks. That's a network uh, of the 21st century where people work, connect, engage, they know each other, they support each other. St some startups move to the Western Ukraine and continue to operate. One of the startup helps me is actually to continue to, to, to double uh, click on telemedicine and telemedicine become a very important element because people being relocated, they still need to have access to their doctors. Doctors relocated, how you connect former doctors who were your, your, your family doctors, how you connect them with the people um, uh, that moved as well, how you maintain all the rackets. Without technology, that would have been chaos. People would be disconnected. How you can make sure that the needs of certain communities in the certain region are satisfied? How you make sure that um, this is all accounted? Uh, without technology in this today's world and without the communities that are go went there and built tools. For example, I'm giving you some examples on the healthcare. So Ministry of Healthcare built a platform that enabled hospitals to, to request uh, uh, humanitarian support. They, they, it's created a, a, a charity organization to kind of do a matching mechanism. All these things um, being helpful uh, for, for the country and for the communities. And it's, it's important. You mentioned, uh, I, I know that there is a lot of people in the audience uh, and you know, it's a, it's a people under 35. Um, when I started my first company, I was, 24. Uh, and I was very with the team. You can't be somewhere on the high hill, you know, you know, being just an investor. All the best startups, all the best, you know, people who actually build great stories. They've been on the ground with their developers. They've been coding together, they've been testing together. They had a success together and they had a failures together. And that's very important. And it, it doesn't matter if it's peaceful time or war time. You need to be with your team. You need to be helpful and you need to look for the creativity and look for the different models as well because we're talking about startups and the fundraising and how you fundraise money, for example, or how you generate revenue for startup in the situation where there is a lot of unclarity and, 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 and uh, um, no idea how this could be done. So that's why you know, engagement with international community like European Union, which is currently helping us with a, with a fund to help uh, build the right model. Um, we, we, we're looking into this, so. Well, look, uh, yesterday we had a day for schools here from the local schools and we had two Ukrainian refugees. I think it's fair to say that they were the brightest uh, students there in the room. They asked the most questions, they had, they had the most ideas around entrepreneurship and innovation so um, I think we are the Republic of Ireland is aiming to bring in 100,000 refugees I think we certainly have hit 25,000 they've done a great job of getting the young people into school I hope they go home as soon as possible but they are making a real contribution here as well so I so I wanted to say that um, how can the European tech community and the companies because there are some fantastic companies here today 
How can the European PAC community, on that individual basis that you mentioned, let the governments do what they want to do, but how can the TAC community support uh, not only Ukraine through this terrible war, uh, but also in the work of rebuilding? What can TAC companies and founders from other countries do? Um, thank you, thank you. For, first of all, thank you very much for taking care of those who are refugees. And I know um, uh, today the, um, the uh, Board of Control uh, just made a report there is more people coming uh, back to Ukraine than leaving. So there is a people returning home. Um, Kiev is getting much more people in the city. It's, it's becoming more vibrant as it used to be, of course, with all the restrictions of the military time. Um, at the same time, um, many young people who are currently in Europe are extremely talented. Um, I'm, what I can tell to a lot of high-tech people, com companies, I started, I had part of my career in Denmark and I sold my startup to Denmark, the Danish company, a long time ago. So uh, use this opportunity because you actually have access to very talented people. One of the very important element, uh, which was always noticed by a lot of high-tech companies long time ago, and as well as famous high-tech companies like Google, Microsoft, and others, is, a, is the creativity of Ukrainian developers. Uh, sometimes we can go into the rocket science, we can actually build things too high in the sky, but it's a creativity and tenacity, looking for solutions. This is coming again from the background of education, because a lot of focus is in schools is on STEM and particularly math. And math requires uh, solving problems. My teacher back in my school, uh, the math teacher, I graduated from mathematical school in, in, in Ukraine, in Lviv. Uh, when we graduated 10 years after graduation, he told us, I never taught you math. I taught you to solve problems. And I think that's a very important element of Ukrainian high-tech community and many Ukrainians. We actually love to solve problems. We, we would love to have less problems than we have now, but when we have a problems, we like them to be solved. And that's important. And I would also encourage people in the audience, when you face the problem and the challenge, um, don't be stuck. Anything can be solved. It's a question about resources, time, creativity, and you actually your brains or your network where you can find solutions. And that's all possible. In high tech community of Europe, there's a plenty of things you can actually tap. You can start building startups together. You can look at the opportunities, how you can engage uh, Ukrainian IT industry. You can please, if you've been doing outsourcing in Ukraine, continue doing this. Um, the talents are there. They have skills. And uh, if you give a job to Ukrainian high tech, we're still in Ukraine, you bring uh, an you make an economic impact that sustain Ukrainian economy because Ukrainian high tech industry was one of the major contributor um, to, uh, uh, to Ukrainian GDP. Well, you know, we want to wish you well. Um, in a time of war, we say, I give you my heart. We are separated at the minute. We are feel very close to the people of Ukraine. Uh, you're showing great grit and doggedness and genius. We have no doubt that you will succeed and you will, you will keep your freedom. Um, I want you to stay on for, for the applause because the applause isn't just for you uh, and the wonderful work you're doing with Darnitsa and, and, and the other projects, but also for the people of Ukraine. So let's have a round of applause for, for Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you. This is for Ukrainian people. So, look, uh, Dimitro, you can't see the room, but the room is standing. So we wish you every success. Please stay in touch. And we will be doing our best to help the work of rebuilding. And hopefully the war ends soon, and we can help you in that work of rebuilding. So, Gerda Ked, thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you.